The attack on Pearl Harbor left Americans shocked and saddened and hastened the U.S. entry into war. There aren't many people left who were alive and remember that day, and even fewer who were there and survived it. Our Russ Riesinger talked to one Montana veteran who witnessed it all firsthand. I watched TV from, from 5 o'clock till 7 o'clock, except on Monday nights I watch uh, uh, Antique Roadshow Monday night. By 9 o'clock I'm working on the computer. I do that till 10, then I go to bed. I'm going to go up and get, get, get the picture. Seventy-seven years have passed since that fateful day when Hal Conrad found himself in the middle of a moment that would change the course of American history. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was a great surprise. Surprised the hell out of me. <laughs> it was supposed to be his day to sleep in after getting a pass to Honolulu the night before. Five o'clock in the morning, he shook me awake and charged the quarters. It was shaking me. He says, the guy's supposed to guard the water tower from six to, to noon. Is sick, you're gonna to have to take his place. A couple of hours later, looking out at Pearl Harbor, Conrad noticed silver airplanes he thought were U.S. Navy planes training. They weren't. I watched the first plane drop his bomb, and I thought it was a dummy until it disappeared behind the trees along the fence line between me and Pearl, and black smoke started rolling up, and concussions started rumbling through, and I knew it wasn't a dummy. I grabbed my field phone, called the CP, and I says, the Japs are bombing the hell out of Pearl Harbor, and the guy says, you're still drunk. <laughs> so then about, about that time, I was ready to hang up, and I heard this, something like, sound like a chair crashing. And this voice comes on the phone, just, just somebody shoot me, me, me. I said, what, I'm I said, what the hell I'm trying to tell you? And I hung up and went back to walking my beat. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor had begun. Before it was over, 18 U.S. ships were sunk or damaged, almost 200 U.S. aircraft destroyed, 2,403 men killed. As the onslaught continued, Conrad came under fire by the passing Japanese planes. Every time everyone that went by there had a backseat gunner, grinning like a Cheshire cat, pop off a few rounds at me. I found out later there were 40 of those planes. I think every one of them took a shot at me and every one missed. Later, he would find out that the barracks where he would have been sleeping had he not been called into duty that morning had been hit. Many of his friends killed. It's a good thing I had to go on duty when I wasn't supposed to. Otherwise, you would have been in there. Yeah, I would have been there, yes. I was planning to sleep in because <laughs> it was the first morning I'd had a chance to sleep in. Now at the age of 97, Conrad is one of a dwindling number of Pearl Harbor survivors left to tell the story of that dark day. When asked why it's important that Americans remember Pearl Harbor, he gives an answer you might not expect. Because that was a surprise attack that shouldn't have happened. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Apparently, Roosevelt knew about it, but he had promised Churchill we'd get in the war. And he knew if he let the Japs hit us, Congress would declare war immediately. Whether that's true or not has been the subject of debate, but the attack on Pearl Harbor will go down in history as the impetus for America's entry into the Second World War, a war the U.S. would help win, thanks in part to guys like Hal Conrad. We wound up living through it, but I've had a Heck of a good life ever since. I can't complain. I can't even complain about that down there because I, I've survived. It's been my life ever since. I got to do everything I wanted to do. I'm sure you'll be In Lewistown, I'm Russ Riesiger. Yeah, that's what we used to call our go-to-hell hat. MTN News. Thanks, Russ. Now, it's not clear how many Pearl Harbor survivors are still alive, but two years ago, the number was thought to be no more than 2,500. How Conrad, as you just saw, is doing very well. He told us that he still drives. In fact, he passed his driver's license test at the age of 97, he says, without having to wear his glasses. Thanks for sharing your story, Hal.